Racing King Media, powered by BYD, with uh, Mark Tips. Mark, how's things? How's life? It's always good seeing you, sir. How's things? Yeah, very well, mate. I've been busy, but I can't grumble. It's all right. <laughs> One of your charges is headlining uh, at the Copper Box, uh, as Eddie was referring to the Copper Bosch uh, a few times in the uh, press conference. Johnny Fisher. Now, I, I do want to pose a question to you that you know, when Johnny was uh, started off in, in the professional scene, a lot of people just saw him as a ticket seller. You've obviously been there from day dot. Uh, well, what do you make of Johnny's, uh, Johnny's progression throughout the years you've got to know him? Johnny's progressed. Uh very very well I believe and uh, you know he, he got to a point he won the southern area title in good fashion uh, against Harry Armstrong and the, the way in that fight the way he tweaked uh, and adjusted uh, you know blew me away so so I realized he's he's moved on now at 10 fights in uh, we're going out to Vegas we've had a fight out there against a good guy and uh, and um, he's been out, he's had tough sparring, what I mean tough sparring, good technical sparring with, uh, you know, world campaigners, uh, Daniel Dubois, uh, um, what's his name, Gizora and Hergovic. So, listen, he's progressed and, uh, and this Alan Babich fight come up and, and this is going to be the making of him. He's going to be, he's going to be like, he's turning a corner and... Uh, after this fight, uh, he comes through victorious in good fashion. It's how you beat them. It's the fashion you win in. Uh, he will grow and he'll be ready for next level after that. I was going to ask you that question about this fight being the, the stepping stone to the bigger fights. We know the experience that Johnny carries in regards to going to gyms with experienced fighters and sparring them. I do want to ask you about Alan Babich. I got to know you when you were Dillian White's trainer and I was you know, working with Dillian at that time. Um, You've seen a lot of Alan Babich behind the scenes. What do you make of him right now? A lot of people say, look, he's awkward, you know, he's come forward, he's a tough guy. But well, what do you make of Alan Babich? Alan Babich, listen, is, 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 he, he is what he is, yeah? He's got the biggest and bravest of heart. He's a lovely, great human being. He's, uh, he, he, says it, he says it how it is. But listen, uh, Johnny Fisher um, will technically break him up before he does what he wants to. That's, that's the plan. Before, before we beat him at his own game. Yeah? So, so listen, I was around uh, Alan uh, when he first came to this country and uh, he, uh, he was Dillian White's sparring partner for, uh, who's the Canadian guy? Oh, he's trained in America, bald head. Dillian had a great fight with him at the O2. Sold out O2, pay-per-view. What's his name? No, 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 no. Bald head. Oh, mate. But anyway, he, he fitted the bill for sparring, and he gave Dillian tough sparring. But listen, Dillian White, we had to use Babbage in that sparring, so we played with him. <laughs> so, 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 I don't mean play with but he brings it. Listen, no doubt about it, Alan Babbage brings it. But he done a job for Dillian White. Dillian, fell in, D Dillian made a good friend of him, and he's done a good job with him. And... Uh, Listen, it's been a good fight for Johnny Fisher. Listen, we can't overlook him and we ain't. But we're gonna we're gonna we know what we gotta do with him. To control him, tame him, dominate him and punish him before victorious. Fair enough. I do want to talk about other heavyweights and I do want to talk about another Brit of ours who's gonna be headlining at Wembley Stadium in Anthony Joshua and Daniel Dubois. A great British clash. Uh, what do you make of this one? Did you feel like Daniel would get to this point where He'd be headlining when we say that we know he's fought Usyk in a, in a closer fight that people anticipated. He's fought George Joyce, so he's got that experience as well. But did you feel like Daniel would get to this point at some point in his career? Well, listen, it's not, it's not, um, it's, it's no good. It's, it's not a uh, you know new news that Daniel Dubois can bloody well punch. But you know he was a, he seemed a little bit fragile. Uh, mentally, uh, in his past, his past fights, you know, some 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 odd behaviour, so so to speak. But he can punch, and I think this is a fantastic fight. His last fight against Ergovic was uh, was his best fight to date for me. But um, but uh, it's quite worrying. He took a few right-handers off of uh, off of uh, Ergovic before before he, he become you know dominant himself against Ergovic. 
So for me, uh, I, I see AJ the favourite, but what AJ's got to think about is apparently, you know, word has it that, that AJ AJ knocked him out. No, sorry, Dubois knocked him out in the in the GB camp some some years back. So that's always going to have a, a mental effect on on, on, on uh, AJ himself. I believe that. And AJ, to be honest with you, when uh, when he left um, Rob McCracken, to be honest with you, he was a little lost himself. Uh, I don't know who looked after him then, but he just his, his game was too fancy. Didn't work for him, and you know he, he, he weren't quite quite the same as he was. But um, against Nguanu, uh, his last five out, he looked like he's got his his, his uh, mentality back where it should be. But listen, Nguanu ain't a fighter. He's a he's a he's a UFC fighter. He's there to do it. He, he don't know how to slip a shot or parry a shot or, or slip and counter. So so you got to weigh all that out. You know what I mean? So a very good fight, Daniel Dubois versus Anthony Joshua, and and, and anyone can win. Who's hard, fast, and first wins. Fair enough. I was going to ask you a few questions, but you've answered them all in that. I was going to ask you about the sparring and whether that would have an effect. But you've answered it there. I do want to ask you. Um, there's been a, a back and forth that's sort of taken um, taken forefront this week. Anthony Joshua and Carl Froch. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but there seems to be a, a back and forth. Carl's released, released a video on his YouTube channel as well. What do you make of that? Do you know what? Uh, to be fair, I've not seen a lot of it. I've heard bits and pieces, but I love listening to Cole Foch. Says it how it is. Is always bang on. I can't argue with Cole Foch. And, and, and yeah, that's it. I do want to quickly talk about Tyson Fury before I let you go. We saw what happened uh, a couple of months ago when he fought Alexander Usyk in a close fight. Um, I do want to ask you the mentality of a fighter picking himself up after a loss on such a big occasion. Do you think that's going to play effect in the rematch or did you see a lot which Tyson did offer against Susie that he can come back and win that rematch? No, he can come back and win that rematch, uh, Tyson Fury. There was, there was a couple of flaws in that fight and he will know. He will, if anyone knows, he will know. He's the most smartest fighter out there, you know, active fighter. He's a, a clever guy and he'll, he'll know what adjustments he's got to make to get the win over Alexander Usyk. But he will have to make them adjustments for sure. Yeah. I do want to talk to you actually. I was, we saw uh, Prince Nassim uh, a couple of days ago, his son signing for Misfits. You've obviously got El Brook who was part of, part of the whole Misfits thing. What do you make of Misfits sort of dipping the toes and signing a few professional fighters, you know, maybe, it's, maybe whilst they're young to maybe put on some pro fights as well? So you know what I, I, I don't really look that deep into it, you know. I, El, El Brook come to me through uh, Johnny Fisher, and uh, and and we developed a relationship, a working relationship, and and I'm happy with what she what, what, what she's got, what she's got there, and there, and, and all I want to do is help her live her dream, and she she dreams to be a, a professional boxer. So that's all I can do is is my job and. Be honest, with you, some, some, and most of the other characters, I hear their names, but I don't really know who they are. Is that not a big coup, though? Prince Nassim's son, Sami Hamid, signing for Misfits. Signing for that's a that's a great signing. You get me? It's a it's a great signing for Misfits, and uh, and and uh, to see where it goes. I mean, I don't I don't know these guys. I know uh, I know Nassim Hamid was one hell of a. Uh, one hell of a fire. When I first looked at him, I thought, "What's he going to do? Look what he did! <laughs> he, he, he was the uh, same, same as Eubank Senior. I thought the same, but brilliant fighters. He's got something." Nassim Mamid. When I was in the Peacock Gym years ago, I walked in there. Must have been the early nineties, yeah. And we had a big heavy bag in there, as big as that pillar there, that big as that concrete pillar there. And but it was flying. I've never seen it fly from fly, fly, or, 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 or move around so much. And I thought, who's punching that? There was this little geezer. It was Nassim Ahmed. He was whacking it, whacking it, <laughs> make a punch. Yeah, no. Nah. But Nassim Ahmed, what a, what a, what a, um, his offspring are, uh, are going to bring something to the table. So that'd be exciting uh, for Misfits for sure, yeah. Cool. Mark, it's always a pleasure seeing you. Always a pleasure talking to yourself. You, you have got a queue of people behind me. Thank, so thank you very much for giving us your time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.